All right, so Google's been at it again, and this time it's a pretty fundamental part of their ecosystem, their future design language. And in classic Google fashion, details about the new direction called Material 3 Expressive has seemingly slipped out ahead of any official announcement thanks to an accidental blog post. Yeah, it's a big oops from them, but let's get into it. If you want more content and commentary on all things Google from Android and Gemini and everything else in between, then hit that subscribe button. It really helped me out. Cheers. So this accidental reveal detailed all the thought and surprising amount of research behind Material 3 Expressive. We were expecting this at Google I.O. It wasn't meant for the eyes or at least public eyes just yet. It was destined to be fully unveiled in just a few weeks. But as is the way of the internet when these things do leak, the Wayback Machine has grabbed it so we can have a little look at what Google is planning for its OS applications and developers as well. So speaking of Google's plans, those of us keeping an eye out on the latest Android developments might have noticed something a little, well, underwhelming with those initial Android 16 beta releases. Lots of little tweaks here and there, but where's the visual punch? That's what we've been hoping for for a long time. There's no real wow factor. Um, maybe we're expecting a little bit too much, especially given some of the proposed functions and leaks that were floating around ahead of launch. So this brings us nicely to the evolution of Google's design philosophy. We've already seen a significant shift with that introduction of Material U all the way back when with Android 12. That was all about personalization, about making the user interface feel a little bit more tailored to you through individual dynamic color palettes extracted from your wallpaper with more fluid adaptable components within that. Material U brought a sense of I, th I would say warmth and individuality that Android was, at least was a it felt like a clear departure from the designs years gone by. Think about how the colors suddenly shift across your system, how the widgets adapt. That's basically the core of Material U. Now though, it looks like Material 3 Expressive is that next step in this design journey from Google, where Material U focused on simple personalization, some of it automated personalization as it were. Material 3 Expressive seems to be dialing that up a quite a bit more with added, or I think what Google are gonna call it, personality. It's all about moving beyond the personalized foundation to create interfaces that Google itself is saying that will potentially connect with people on a more emotional level. I'm not really sold on that, but they do want to inject a little bit more feeling, more character into our mobile digital experiences. And while it might not be, or at least we might not be seeing the full extent of this in the first few Android 16 releases and the stable release, which is coming soon, it's highly likely that these principles and components being developed under this expressive banner will gradually wait, make their way into future Android updates, maybe as soon as that first big quarterly platform release, aka QPR1, for Android 16, which is expected around September 2025, based upon the current timeframes, or perhaps even front and center with the Pixel 10 series launch. Here's the deal with Material 3 Expressive though. Google's calling it a bold new direction or bold new direction for design. That's their words, not mine. But you have to admit that's a pretty punchy marketing slogan. They're going to as far as to say it's the most research update in their entire design system ever. That remains to be seen to me at the very least. Think about that for a moment. This isn't technically a minor tweak, it's that they're framing this as a massive overhaul, building upon the foundations that were laid all the way back when with Material U. So what's the big idea behind Material 3 Expressive then? Well, Google wants apps to be less clean and boring and more, well, as they're putting it, emotional. They want interfaces that connect with people on a deeper level. How that looks, well, I'm gonna go into that in just a moment. It's a bit of a vague concept, but it's a clear indication that they wanna move away from the somewhat sterile designs that have become prevalent in recent years, even built upon materials and the principles of Material U. You might also hear it called M3 Expressive or just Expressive Design. They're really pushing Expressive out there. That's their word of the year in terms of their UI interfaces. I didn't actually know this, but back in 2022, the Material Design team apparently had something of an existential crisis. They were asking the question, why do all apps look the same? Where's the feeling? Where's the personality? It's a pretty fair point, but at the same time, I do think it does make a lot of sense to have apps that look the same. Again, if you pick up a bunch of applications these days or install them from the Google Play Store, even with the personalization of Material U, there's still a major degree of visual uniformity, and that's a good thing and a bad thing in equal measure. So for the past three years, Google says they've been trying to figure out that next step for Material Design, and this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. They've been putting in some serious work behind the scenes, and they've ran 46, or at least according to themselves, separate research studies with hundreds of different designs and apparently over 18,000 participants from all corners of the globe. That's a serious investment of time and resources building upon that user-centric approach that really informed what Material U has become. The result, well, a system that's supposedly both beautiful and highly usable, again, is up to debate. They're really emphasizing that this thing is whole rooted in solid research and built on best usability practice, practices. 
basically they just want designers to feel confident in using these new tools and guidelines, knowing that they're building upon something that not only looks good, but also works well. Taking that cause usability principles of Material U and basically just layering on new expressive dimensions to that. Google reckons the fundamental parts of expressive design are gonna boil down to five key elements, the use of color, shape, size, motion, and containment. They're aiming to create what, and this is their words, not mine, delightful user experiences with a bold use of shape and color, taking the dynamic color principles of Material U and pushing them even further, exploring bolder palettes and even more distinctive visual elements. They're also arguing that these design elements aren't just about their aesthetic appeal, they're fundamental to usability. They help to draw attention to what's important within the interfaces themselves, making key actions and key areas stand out and grouping similar elements together. Again, none of this is particularly new, but it's about guiding the user eye and making interactions a little bit more efficient, a principle that was always central to the core of material you design and enhanced with that expressive layer, basically this extra layer they're throwing on top of it. And one of the new components that's out of this material three expressive is a floating toolbar. In the concept designs which were shared on this website, it was shown as a pill-shaped bottom bar that doesn't span the entire width of your screen. This means you see a sliver of the background, which according to Google makes edge-to-edge -edge designs even more important. They even point out that Google Chat is an example of this where we see the kind of design we have today. It's kind of a visual flair that aligns with this expressive goal, potentially offering some more visually distinct and less uniform looks than many other material you components that exist as they are today. But one of the key takeaways we've seen from Google's research is that they claim that these expressive designs are just easier to use. Again, another thing we will have to test in the real world, they supposedly just help you quickly spot the key action on each screen and navigate through them more quickly. They even throw around some in pretty impressive numbers as a result of their research. Apparently participants in their studies were able to spot key UI elements up to four times faster than with the expressive designs applied. That's a huge difference. And they're also saying that they've seen the time it takes to tap on key actions decrease across, at least by seconds across various designs that they've tested throughout this entire design phase. In the world of user experience, I think seconds matter. These kind of improvements in usability are exactly what we'd hoped, well, what we've hoped to see integrated into Android over time, build upon, building upon some of the major strengths of Material U. And now Google is careful to emphasize that these are just concept designs. They're not necessarily reflective of final products, which is a good and a bad thing in some ways. Things can change during development phases. However, they do point to a leaked Google clock redesign as an example of something that might be closer to a finished product. And they're using Gmail's current UI as a before example, which gives us a pretty clear comparison point. These kinds of visual shifts focusing on bolder elements and clearer hierarchy within the actual user interfaces themselves are what we might anticipate seeing more of in Android as Material 3 Expressive evolves potentially, well, hopefully offering a more visually dynamic experience than the standard Material U, which is very distinct in its own right from other versions of Android and skins you'll see from other OEMs. They've also shown off some concept designs for a range of other applications, including a clock application, voice input interface, photo editor, payments app, and even a wallet. This suggests that Material 3 Express has been intended to be used as a broad system-wide design language, not just something for individual applications. And as Android itself evolves, I think we can just start to see more of this, at least more of these principles applied across the entire operating systems major components and various components, first party applications and all of that jazz, perhaps basically offering a more unified and distinct visual identity compared to that initial and current incarnations of Material U, as I've been alluding to multiple times throughout this video so far. So yeah, I will say while the initial Android 16 betas definitely feel a little light on groundbreaking visual changes, the research and concepts behind Material 3 Expressive definitely strongly suggest to us that we're on the cusp of seeing a more significant evolution in Android's look and feel. And of course, leaked designs that we've seen and we shared here on the channel definitely indicate to us that Google is clearly putting a lot of weight behind this. So seeing this as the next step beyond Material U, something we've wanted to know about, we can really anticipate many of these expressive principles making their way into Android over time, potentially delivering a little bit extra wow factor that we've, we've really been waiting for over the past couple of years. I think it's just one of those things that at least visually, we just haven't seen much. It's a stagnated a little bit. Yeah, that's a little look at what Google has installed for Material 3 Expressive. They've leaked it themselves accidentally. We Everybody caught it online. I think it, whether this just fully lives up to the hype remains to be seen. Design, it, it's naturally subjective. What you like and what I like are gonna be two different things. I think what one person finds in air quotes expressive 
another might find cluttered or distracting. So yeah, there's, there's no denying that Google has put in a lot of thought and at least research into this, building upon the foundations of Material. And it, it's going to be interesting to see just how it all plays out with their products, be that from Nest, be that from Google TV, be that Android TV, Android itself. And yeah, Android is going to be the core of that, at least in the coming months and years in the future. I, I want to ask you, what do you want to see from Android moving forward? Is this potentially that overhaul you're hoping for? Or is it just a little bit of a sidestep into something a little bit visually new, but not really that new, if that makes sense? Let me know down in the comment sections below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. It's a little look at what, or at least, at least a peek behind the curtain ahead of IO on what Google could have in store for Android in the future. Yeah, let me know what you think. Cheers for watching and I'll speak to you later.